Hello, welcome to the Cleveland Clinic Radiation Oncology Residency Program. My name is Rahul Tendulkar, and I'm the Residency Program Director here. Hi, I'm Sula Aranath. I'm the Associate Program Director, uh, and we just wanted to go through a little bit of information about our program uh, so you can get to know it a little bit better. So just a brief background on the history of the Cleveland Clinic. It was founded in 1921 as a multi-specialty physician practice by four military physicians after World War I. It's really based on kind of six core values that we take really seriously here at the clinic, including empathy, inclusion, innovation, integrity, quality and safety, and teamwork. And although we are an academic medical center, uh, we are mainly a clinical practice, and so patients first is ultimately our motto. We are a nonprofit hospital that employs 60,000 people, uh, the largest employer actually in Northeast Ohio, and we have 1,900 residents and fellows in 110 accredited training programs. Uh, this is our beautiful cancer center uh, that was built in 2017, so it's pretty new. Uh, we have a great virtual tour that's available on our website as well if you wanna see it uh, in a little bit more detail. So our radiation oncology curriculum is based off of an apprenticeship model. We have 13 clinical services uh, that are divided into two month blocks in the PGY two and three year and one month blocks in the PGY five year. Uh, the services are primarily one to one with a resident uh, paired with one physician. Um, there are a few services where uh, the resident is paired with um, a primary clinician uh, as well as a translational scientist, uh, but the workload is no more than the typical one to one model um, if that is the case. Um, we do have 10 months of research in the PGY-4 year, uh, and that 10 months is generally given over a flexible schedule. So for example, uh, this past year due to COVID, boards were moved, and so our PGY-4 residents uh, were given two months in order to study for boards um, this year. About 95% of our training does occur at main campus. Uh, we have one month where uh, our residents spend uh, at one of our community hospitals as an elective, uh, and there's also a one-month pediatric elective. Uh, most often, the 12 cases that you need to hit the uh, pediatric requirement can be, uh, can be uh, gotten here at main campus. Uh, however, if you would like additional peds experience, that can be, uh, that can happen at St. Jude or the University of Cincinnati. Our program is highly structured uh, and we have protected educational time every day from 8 to 9 a.m. Uh, these lectures include rad bio and physics. Uh, we have chart rounds, peer review, and M&M conferences. Uh, we have didactic lectures, technical conferences, and uh, we're probably best known for our morning conferences that are case-based uh, and done in the Socratic style. Uh, we typically have visiting professors about three to four times per year. Uh, and with university hospitals um, being in close proximity, they typically also have two to three visiting professors uh, on a yearly basis that our residents get to participate uh, in as well. Um, we have a leadership development retreat about two times per year, which is really the first formal program among US radiation oncology programs. Um, these are just a couple pictures from some of our uh, prior retreats. Uh, we do team building exercises as well as part of these leadership retreats uh, and volunteer activities uh, as well. Um, we have several perks as part of our program, uh, including a personal laptop uh, with dual monitors at each resident desk, uh, iPhones with unlimited data. Uh, our residents take approximately four weeks of home call per year uh, and it's main campus coverage up only, so there is no cross coverage um, of any of our regional sites. Our faculty have approximately one academic day per week, uh, and residents can use that time to also catch up on academic work um, as well as any clinical work. Um, there's a book fund, it's about $650 per year for about $2,600 in total over the course of residency. Uh, we offer a competitive salary and excellent benefits, including uh, now 12 weeks of paid maternity leave and four weeks for another parent. Um, travel uh, 
our residents typically get about $2,500 per year for meetings if they're a first author on a publication, um, plus travel to the Maryland Review course for radiation biology and physics. Uh, and Cleveland is a great city to live in with a low cost of living with big city amenities. Um, we offer a lot of advanced technology here at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, including remote access to the electronic medical record and treatment planning system uh, for our, our residents. Uh, we have six linear, linear accelerators, including two variant edges and four true beams. We have a gamma knife icon and the Cleveland Clinic is a gamma knife training site. So most of our residents do go through that gamma knife training program. We have um, very high volume, uh, low dose rate and high dose rate brachytherapy programs for prostate and uh, GYN malignancies. Uh, we have a high volume SBRT program as well as um, a robust intraoperative radiation therapy program. Um, we also have a hyperthermia suite uh, and one of our uh, translational scientists, Dr. Jennifer Yu, um, is uh, actually the president of this society. So we do quite a few cases. Um, thanks, Dr. Abinath, for that great overview of our program. Um, I get to brag about our residents a little bit um, because they've done some really uh, amazing things and I'm really proud of their accomplishments. Um, first of all, we have a very high volume clinical experience. As you can see here, our Cleveland Clinic averages uh, generally uh, far exceed the old and the new ACG minimum requirements, particularly in areas such as interstitial brachytherapy, inhibitory brachytherapy, and SPRC. They've really um, demonstrated academic excellence uh, over the last several years. Um, we've had the good fortune of having 100% ABR board pass rate on the physics, radiation biology, clinical, and oral exams over the last um, 78 exam takers. On the in-training exam, the typical resident uh, scores at the median 70, uh, 89th percentile compared to their peer class nationally, um, which really reflects, I think, the rigor of the morning conference uh, schedule that we have uh, created. Um, on average, our graduates uh, of our program have averaged about 16 publications and seven book chapters during the residency. Uh, and typically, three out of the nine residents that attend ASTRO annually uh, are selected for an oral presentation um, really uh, uh, owing to the hard work and, and uh, determination that they've put forth into this. Our morning conference is well known for creating of handouts, um, which used to be compiled in an internal book, which we have um, externalized. Um, first, the Handbook of Treatment Planning and Radiation Oncology was published several years ago and is now in its third edition. Uh, this is uh, primarily a technical handbook. Um, the companion to that is the Essentials of Clinical Radiation Oncology Handbook, uh, which really uh, comprises the, the uh, clinical uh, radiation oncology piece that we find to be so essential to learning. We expect our graduates to basically know everything inside uh, these two textbooks uh, by, the, by the time that they graduate, uh, and we think that really prepares them for the next level. Our educational philosophy regarding our morning conference um, is really based on, I think, this slide. Um, which is finding the right balance between psychological safety and accountability. So our real main goal is to balance um, expectations with a supporting learning environment to create this ideal learning zone um, and to find the right balance with uh, psychological safety uh, as a priority. Um, with regard to research opportunities, our residents have um, the advantage of taking part in either clinical, physics, or translational research uh, opportunities. We have four fabulous physician scientists on our faculty. Dr. Jennifer Yu was the first, uh, who's been here almost a decade now. Dr. Jake Scott and Omar Mian joined us um, about four or five years ago. And Dr. Tim Chan is our most recent hire. Um, and we're really excited about um, him bringing the new Immuno-Oncology Center to the Cleveland Clinic, where there will be tremendous research opportunities for our current and future residents to partic participate in. Um, job placement has been uh, very successful over the last several years. Um, we're really proud of the fact that our residents have, um, have been very highly coveted on the job market for both academic and private practice jobs um, over the last several, several years. Um, that really uh, are taking jobs all over the country in various different settings. Um, and we really wanted to highlight this slide to show the diversity of jobs available um, to residents uh, who graduate from this program. Over the last 15 years, um, 
Interestingly, about three quarters were hired by academic medical centers, um, about half as academic faculty with uh, teaching and research responsibilities. Uh, another 19% who are non-teaching community satellites uh, of an academic medical center, and another 27% who join private practice. Um, this is where some of our academic um, job placement uh, opportunities have gone. Um, we really try to train our residents to retain them on our faculty as much as possible. So we've had the good fortune of retaining eight of our former graduates on our faculty at present over the last 15 years. Um, but obviously we can't keep everyone. And so uh, many of our terrific residents have gone on to great jobs at other academic centers. For those who are interested in clinical, uh, primary clinical jobs, um, they have had, again, great success working at academic satellites, um, as well as in private practices uh, at a number of places. Um, we now have a couple of uh, our recent graduates who have been recruited by former graduates of the program, I think, really demonstrating that the alumni network uh, is really strong in trying to uh, recruit uh, people uh, that they want to work with. Um, ultimately, our mission is to provide the best training experience possible to our residents. Four years of residency um, goes by quickly, uh, but we want to make it a fun experience um, and really maximize the learning opportunities. Um, we really believe in uh, team-based learning um, and collegiality, and that's really a, a major foundation of our program. Um, as mentioned, we really invest in our training to retain residents on our faculty. Uh, this is why all of our faculty are highly invested in our residents' education because we truly believe that there's no better colleague than someone that we've trained to be uh, at the highest level that they can be. Um, and we really believe that we have to prepare our graduates for success in either academic or community practice because both jobs are really important and we want to um, provide patients out there with the best, uh, best patient experience possible. So thank you for your interest in our program. Um, we hope that you see all the videos online and, and really have a good uh, interview experience this year, uh, despite um, any limitations of travel that COVID has uh, presented to us. Um, thanks and take care.